Hi, Angelica, this is Bryce Roush. Uh, just wanted to quickly check to see if you can see that I'm sharing my screen. You should see Get to Know Your Fitbit with Bryce Roush. Yes, Bryce, I can see it. Excellent. Well, then I'm, I'm ready whenever you are. So just let me know when you'd like to begin or if you want to wait a little bit for more people to join, whatever works for you. Um, I see that we currently have seven participants. So if we can wait just a little bit longer, maybe about a good uh, three to five more minutes to see how many more people will pop on. And then I think we should be able to begin then. Excellent. So we'll, we'll wait maybe for till 9.05 and then we'll get going. All right. Thank you so much, Bryce. All right, Angelica, should we get started? Yes, Bryce, we should get started. Thank you. All right, wonderful. Well, and this is being recorded, so I'll be able to share the recording with you afterwards for anybody that wanted to join but wasn't able to join us this morning. Okay, thank you. All right, so for those on the line, uh, today, what, the presentation that we're doing is called Get to Know Your Fitbit. Uh, this is a presentation that I do with uh, a number of my clients uh, that have are utilizing uh, Fitbit wearables, fitness trackers within their employee wellness program. Um, and the goal of today is we're actually going to go through a few things, uh, but all touching your experience with your new Fitbit tracker. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's actually done on the device. 
Uh, next, we're going to talk about the Fitbit application. And then last, we're going to talk about uh, your Fitbit account. Now, this isn't a, a training necessarily. This is almost more of a, a did you know, trying to show you some of the most popular features among those three areas of your experience. Uh, but also because it's, we don't have a lot of people, if you have any questions, uh, chat. please use the chat feature within Zoom to ask it, uh, or wait till the end when, I, when I'll open things up for questions and we can rattle through it. But please, if you have any questions, uh, we do wanna make sure that we're addressing every question today. So for those that are less familiar with Fitbit, you know, maybe learned about Fitbit when Art Band Furniture shared about the program with you, uh, just a little bit of a history. You know, we've been in business for about 11 years. We're the number one wearable globally. We've sold over 70 million of the trackers that you now own today. Uh, we're available. And now Fitbit devices are actually can be translated to nine different languages. And so we've been able to harness a lot of the uh, users, experiences, and feedback. And we're always coming up with new trackers so we just announced a couple new trackers recently uh, but also new features and new account settings for our users as well and so and a lot of that feedback ends up feeding into some of what i'll be sharing with you today uh, to start though there's a there's a, a, a misconception to some extent about fitbit in that a lot of people's perceptions of fitbits and their fitbit device is yeah, this is the thing that helps me track my steps, um, which is true. It does track steps, uh, but it actually does a significant more. Uh, and this is a little bit of a fun fact. You can actually engage in much of the Fitbit experience without even owning or ever owning a Fitbit tracker. Uh, you can create a Fitbit account. Com it's completely free. And there's a ton that you can do with it, uh, even if you don't have a tracker. Now, presumably, if you're on this webinar, you have a tracker. but as you're exploring and you're getting the most out of out of uh, what's all already included in the Fitbit experience, it goes a lot more than just everyday activity. So, for example, exercise uh, tracking is a component of a lot of wellness programs. Trying to increase the amount of times that you're exercising each week uh, has a big uh, has, has big results in your overall health and well-being. Uh, you can do exercise tracking either manually or automatically within Fitbit. There's nutrition trackers that are also already included in the Fitbit experience. There's sleep tracking, which you could either do manually or many Fitbit devices will actually do it automatically. You can manage your weight. So, you know, that's obviously a goal for a lot of us, uh, trying to reduce our, our BMI or body fat percentage. Uh, Fitbit not only allows you to be able to do that within the Fitbit experience by manually logging things like your weight, but we also, a lot of people don't know this, have smart scales. It's called the ARIA and the ARIA 2 smart scale that are available and millions of people use every day. And it tracks things like your weight, your body fat percentage, and then reducing stress. So actually one of the features that I'll be talking about within uh, the Fitbit device has absolutely nothing to do with movement. It has everything to do with slowing down and controlling your breathing and relaxing to help you manage your stress. So Exercising, eating, sleeping better, managing your weight, reducing stress, these are all elements that are already embedded somewhere within the Fitbit experience, and many of these actually completely for free. So we're gonna start by talking about the specific Fitbit devices. All right, this is a total eye chart, and this is not meant for you to, uh, to read every single line. You know, ultimately, again, if you're on this webinar, you probably own a Fitbit device, so it's what's more valuable is for you to understand all the different features and functionality of your specific device. And so Angelica, I'll, you know, I'll make sure that you get a, a copy of this if you don't already have one. Feel free to distribute with the team. You know, but ultimately you would use a, a chart like this if you're considering getting a Fitbit device and just kind of looking through all the list of features to find the one that's going to help you with whatever that goal is for you around health and wellness. Um, and so as you can see, you know, one of the, uh, you know, one of the top things that people say when they're looking for a Fitbit is, oh, you know, if I'm going to be wearing it on my wrist or I'm going to have it with me, it better tell time. You know, if it's going to act like a watch, it better also be a watch. 
And so you can use this to discover, oh, well, most Fitbit devices will help me and it will track time, but not the Flex 2. That may be an indication for me that I may want to avoid that. But then when you look further down this features list, the features get more and more sophisticated. And so, uh, so again, use a chart like this to try to find the Fitbit that's going to help you find your fit. Uh, because Fitbit, you know, it's a big part of our strategy. We don't just want one tracker. Uh, we want to have multiple trackers that will support you wherever you are on your wellness journey. So a chart like this will help you find that device that's going to best support you. So let's talk about three quick things related to your Fitbit device. So we're going to start with smartwatches. Um, and, and mainly because, you know, some of you may have purchased our Fitbit Ionic or, you know, maybe you're just kind of looking at, you know, what, what are those next trackers that are going to come? And, you know, certainly smartwatches are a thing that Fitbit is going to be, um, you know, investing more and more. You'll see more of our product lineup uh, incorporating uh, smartwatches as well as the kind of standard activity trackers in the future. Um, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail because when, when I look at the numbers, there aren't a, a ton of people from Art Van Furniture that have smart watches, but it's at least good to know that that's uh, a big part of uh, Fitbit's future. So this is the Versa. We just announced that it's actually available here. Um, I think even next week it'll be available. Uh, but you know, this is uh, you know one of the lowest cost smart watches, but it really lets you do a ton. There's so much that you can do with a smartwatch versus an activity tracker, if for no other reason than because there's a, an entire app store that's available right on your wrist. Um, and so check it out. Here, again, another art eye chart, which just shows you all the things that you can do that's going to you know, streamline your day, make you move a little bit faster. But all of these apps are going to be available right on the wrist. So there's tons that you can do um, even right on the wrist. So for example, I wear a Fitbit Versa. And I've loaded my credit card in there and my Starbucks card in there, which means if I go for a run, I can literally go to Starbucks and pay for my Starbucks without having my wallet nearby. So for me, that's super convenient. Uh, you know, that's a feature that's really important to me. Uh, but again, it just kind of depends on how, how you ultimately want to utilize uh, or what the goal is that you want to utilize a Fitbit device to help you with. And, and then, you know, trying to find as much utility as possible. Another big announcement, in addition to the Versa that we announced recently, <clears throat> actually just a few weeks ago, was the Fitbit Ace. So we know that when you move as a group, uh, particularly as a family, it tends to increase the overall activity uh, of everybody uh, by about 10%. So just by inviting a friend or a family member and connecting with them on the Fitbit app, uh, we tend to see activity levels increase. Uh, but one question that I've been getting for years at Fitbit is, when are you going to have a tracker for kids? You know, my my kids would love to be able to do this with me, uh, but you guys don't have a tracker for them. Well, no longer the case. So we also announced Fitbit Ace. Uh, this is designed kind of the sweet spot is for 8 to 13-year-olds. It certainly can be worn by a kid that's much younger. I have a 3-year-old, um, and uh, she's worn it. Uh, the, the the issue mostly is just uh, little tiny wrists. You know, you're trying to get it to to fit as well as possible. Eight year olds, if it's quite comfortably, um, with you know smaller younger kids, it may you know may fall off a little bit easier. However, you can actually connect this right into your account as the parent, and uh, you'll be able to see their activity. You guys will be able to participate in programs together. It's an over five day battery life, and uh, and you'll be able to compete in step challenges together. So highly encourage, you know, as you're trying to get the most out of your Fitbit experience, you know, consider, you know, Ace is a brand new category for us, but one that we've been asked about for a really long time. So I wanted to let you guys know about it. So now let's talk about the three most popular features within uh, the Fitbit device. So not necessarily within the app, but on the device. And that's exercise tracking, guided breathing, and notifications. So when, uh, so as you are getting comfortable with your Fitbit device, I highly encourage you to become familiar with these three features, especially if you weren't aware of them. So we'll start with exercise tracking. So on the device, and, and you know that automatically the Fitbit uh, may, it's called auto track, but we'll be able to tell that you're doing some type of an exercise and log it within the Fitbit app. That, that's separate from the on-device exercise 
selection. So if you have a Charge 2, a Versa, or an Ionic, or even a Blaze or a Surge, what you can do is you can navigate over to the Exercises section. You can customize the list of exercises that would appear, meaning you know, uh, treadmill, or running, or walking, or biking. So whatever the exercise that um, you are most likely to utilize, you may want to input that right um, in your settings in your app, but that'll make it appear on your Fitbit device. And then when you engage in that exercise, you'll essentially click start on the exercise. And the reason why that's key is because you're going to get enhanced details of that exercise um, from the moment that you started to the moment that you told it to stop tracking. So you, you'll be able to, for example, see your various heart rate levels. And also it helps your Fitbit be more accurate. Uh, because it knows it's exercising, it's more likely to uh, be paying attention to things like active minutes and making sure that you get credit for that. So that's available on the, as I said, the Charge 2, the Blaze, the Surge, the Versa, and the Ionic. But then there's Smart Track Auto Exercise size tracking that's also available on a majority of other devices as well. Next, guided breathing. So as I mentioned, a feature that has been very popular that has nothing to do with becoming more active is our Relax app. And Relax is available on the Charge 2, the Blaze, the Versa, and the Ionic. And essentially what it's doing is it's paying attention to your heart rate and it'll vibrate on your wrist when you should inhale and exhale and you can choose i think it's a two minute or a five minute session uh, but we've actually seen clinical proof that if you use this at least once a day for around six weeks it has a significant impact on your overall uh, stress levels and so um so that's another one to recommend especially if um you know if that's the goal but you know maybe you weren't aware that that was something that even lived within the fit experience and then finally notifications so you know, if you, this is one of those features, again, it has nothing to do with necessarily, you know, moving more, or being more physically active, but it has everything to do with uh, it blending in and being a big part of your everyday lifestyle, especially since, you know, you were able to get your Fitbit device as part of a corporate wellness program, meaning we're all, we're all employees, we all have jobs, and a big part of those jobs is sometimes calendar management or you're getting phone calls. And so getting notifications on your wrist, um, yeah, is something that uh, probably is the most popular feature and the most utilized feature within many of the Fitbit devices. So this is available on the Flex 2, the Ulta, the Ulta HR, Charge, the Charge HR, the Surge, the Blaze, the Versa, and the Ionic. So a vast majority of Fitbit devices will have notifications, in fact, some of the higher end Fitbit devices would allow notifications even beyond call, text, and calendar. Um, for example, <clears throat> maybe really anything that your phone gets a notification for, you could potentially send that right to your wrist on device as well uh, for the Blaze, the uh, Versa, and the Ionic. And so, and, you know, also with the Versa, which is coming out soon, you can even reply to text messages right from your wrist as well. So again, it, it's about blending into your, your lifestyle and trying to provide those features that are going to be most valuable to you. So again, uh, by far, these are the most popular features that are utilized on the wrist. Exercise tracking, guided breathing, and notifications. So if you weren't aware of any of these, uh, check them out because I think you'll really like them. All right. So next, we're going to talk about the Fitbit app. So if you are syncing directly to a computer, then this section isn't really for you. Uh, this is, however, 92% of our users will actually sync their Fitbit data to a smartphone, whether it's a Windows phone, an Android phone, or an iPhone. And so we're gonna talk about three quick things within the Fitbit app. So it's not necessarily on your wrist, certainly they're related, but these are features that you would find when you open up the Fitbit mobile app. And we're gonna talk about goals, we're gonna talk about some social features, and we're gonna talk about sleep. But you know, frankly, you can get completely lost in the app because there's just so much to do, and it sometimes is a little hard to find, so I'm gonna talk about some of the uh, most popular features within the app. Now, and I should also mention, there's a lot of folks 
that use the Fitbit app for syncing and almost never end up logging into their online account. And that's, that's completely fine, but that's our last section. We're gonna talk about some of the things that you can do in your online account as well. So this is just gonna be specific for the app experience. So first, let's talk about goals. So when you first get your Fitbit device, uh, shortly thereafter, you should be prompted to set specific goals and I'll walk you through various prompts. Now, if you don't recall having gone through this within the Fitbit app, this can be found in your account settings. However, this allows you to be able to uh, be walked through a process, you know, right within the Fitbit app for you to say, hey, I'm trying to increase my steps. I'm trying to exercise more. Or maybe it's not physical activity related, but it's more about nutrition or sleep or something else. Um, but, you know, walk through these prompts and you'll have a much better experience with your Fitbit app when you've had some established goals. And so we'll, and we're able to walk you through those goals and help you establish some of those goals. They're going to be totally personalized based on the information that you've submitted. And you'll be able to review some of the uh, trends and adjust your goals over time as well. So it's intuitive and it changes over time as your goals change over time. So as I mentioned, you may end up setting up some goals beyond steps. So for example, within the Fitbit app, there is a food diary or a, uh, an, an entire food database. So you can actually, you know, many of us have used things like Calorie Cloud um, or, you know, there's a, um, Map My Fitness. There's a lot of different apps that are out there that include some type of a, a food logger. And you could either connect those third party apps with your Fitbit account and it'll automatically sync all that data into your Fitbit account. Or, you know, if you're trying to manage your weight, physical activity is a big part of it, but what you eat is, is a just as big of a part of it. And so paying attention to, you know, something as simple as just the calories. I mean, you can get into the details of macronutrients, but if you want to start at a high level, just focusing on man, you know, I have 4,000 calories on Super Bowl Sunday, probably not good, may not feel very good, even if you took 10,000 steps that day. So you can use the Fitbit app to log things such as your food, your water, and your weight, um, all within the Fitbit app. A lot of these can be done on the website as well, but this is something totally independent from the on-device experience, but very much so supports you in your health and wellness goals. We have also found that by tracking you, you just end up becoming that much more aware of your of your day to day actions, activities, and it allows you to make healthier decisions. You know, a lot of times when people first get their device, the feedback that I end up getting from them is, "I had no clue I was walking so little," and uh, because you didn't have that awareness. And so, you know, play around with some of these tools within the app. You'll find many of them. When you go, when you open up the app on that home screen, you'll see a little plus sign in the middle bottom. When you select that, that's where you're going to see all of your options for being able to log things like your food or your exercise, et cetera. And then, um, and then, yeah, I, I would highly recommend that um, while you're kind of getting comfortable logging some of these other things, if you already have some type of a third party app that's doing part of what I just mentioned, there's a good chance that we have an API integration with them, really just meaning that you can link to. And so though you might be logging your food with a different app, you, you should be able to connect those two within the settings of the app that you predominantly use for something like food tracking. Um, and you'll be able to add your Fitbit and it'll allow the, uh, your Fitbit account to actually have a lot of your food tracking information pulled into your account so it all can still live into your Fitbit account. Reminders to move. So this is a feature that we released just two years ago, and especially within the workforce, uh, this is one of the more valuable features that sometimes people just don't know about. So this is another one that you can adjust your settings within your account. So you go into your account, you'll see an area where you can turn on or turn off reminders to move. And essentially what this is doing is it's just trying to set mini goals of 250 steps an hour throughout a lot of times it's the work day. But you, it, this is your call. Uh, maybe you work unusual hours um, or and so nine to five doesn't make sense because maybe you're sleeping through part of nine to five because you work a night shift um, or maybe you never work Fridays. So you don't want reminders to move on Fridays when you have the day off. 
Um, you can adjust the reminders to move setting. And again, like I said, it's right within your account. Um, however, it is a great reminder to not be sedentary throughout the course of an entire day. It is so easy for us in corporate America to do that, and it's not healthy. And so getting around and moving and kind of stretching out your steps, not just so it's all in within one exercise, but it's throughout the day, it's going to be much better for you. And you can uh, tailor this feature to, uh, to your lifestyle. If you want to take it to that next level, uh, some premium options. So, so these do cost a little bit more, and, and if you're utilizing them um, already, then you know you could probably see why. But there are there's Fitbit Coach, there's Audio Coaching, and there's guided health programs that are also available within the Fitbit experience. So I'm only going to spend a second on these because these these aren't um, automatically free with with much of the Fitbit experience. However, they're worth checking out. So Fitbit Coach, kind of like P90X for mobile, uh, gives you the ability to do kind of guided workouts, you set goals. There's some machine learning depending on how easy or hard the workouts that you were doing were. Um, there's Fitbit Coach, there's also Fitbit Yoga, and they're just, they're basically guided exercise programs. Um, you combine Fitbit Coach with audio coaching, which is available for the, uh, the Versa and the Ionic, which would allow you to do various workouts and get prompts. So while you're running, it, it would give you indications of when to change your pace and you know when to slow down when your workout is complete. Uh, alter Bluetooth. So those would be through like your Bluetooth headphones. And then find, finally, guided health programs are coming soon as well um, in 2018. But this is kind of combining both your Fitbit coach, your audio coaching, but then, you know, it's basically customized workout programs specifically to you that adjust depending on your goals. So, you know, if you're looking, you know, if, if you're looking for an exercise program like that, uh, check it out. And, um, and you know, it's, uh, it's uh, something that a lot of people aren't aware even exists, but, um, but it, it's out there and there's, you know, over, I think there's something like two or three million people that use it every day. All right, so this is this is probably one of the most valuable features within the app experience out of everything that I've talked about, finding friends. Finding friends has the uh, most uh, impactful results of any one feature within the app um, to your overall physical activity. So, and a lot of people just don't even know that this exists, but on the, uh, on the bottom of your Fitbit app, you'll see on the far right, there's an area where uh, you select that button, it'll take you to the feed, which I'll be talking about in a second, but it also gives you the opportunity to find friends. So finding friends makes your Fitbit experience so much more fun. Uh, so, and you can do it basically in three easy steps. You do at, you know, or you can press that plus sign in the middle of your screen as well um, as a little shortcut too. But you press add, add friends, and then you add your friend. Three easy steps. And uh, you can you can also connect it with the contacts that are in your smartphone or to your Facebook account, and it'll show you all of those that are, are either in your contact list on your phone or your, of all your Facebook friends that have a Fitbit account. And so it makes it really easy for you to find all of those friends that already have a Fitbit. And then once you've added them, this gives you the opportunity to, uh, you guys can send messages back and forth, you can follow each other, but then you can also invite each other to participate in challenges, which is really fun as well. Uh, and, you know, like I said, th this has, you know, one of the most direct impacts to people's overall physical activity more so than any other feature. So just having one friend, we see people and end up taking 10% more steps. And, and there's, it's not a magical formula. It's really just because, you know, the social impact of having that friend and you two participating in challenges has a big impact, regardless of if it's a Fitbit. You know, this would probably be the case regardless of your tracker. If you just have a friend that you're working out with, you're gonna be more physically active. Uh, but this is a kind of a must do, especially as you're first getting um, interested and you're exploring your Fitbit. This is a Fitbit feed. So we essentially have created a social network that we've called Fitbit feed. And we have more, more than I think five or six million active users on Fitbit Feed today, um, you, you would actually end up discovering this feature much of the same way as you might find a friend. So you click on the community tab on the bottom 
and on the left uh, toggle at the top of your screen, you'll find feed. But this is where you could, sh let's just, just say that you went for an amazing hike. Um, you can snap a picture and write a post, and this is one of the most positive social networks I've ever seen in my life. But even beyond just kind of sharing and allowing other people to kind of share and, and cheer you on as you're hitting some of your goals, you'll also find there's a ton of groups within there that are by common interest. So for example, you know, we have uh, thousands of members in a type 2 diabetes support group. And when you go there, um, you can see that people are genuinely asking others for help. They're sharing their experiences and their difficulties, but they're also praising each other for uh, different milestones that they're accomplishing. And a lot of times it may have nothing to do with their Fitbit, but it's really just a journey that they're going on and they could use the, uh, the support. And Feed has given them the, uh, you know, that, that area to have those interactions and, and find new friends. And so um, Feed is a, a fantastic feature, you know, check it out. There's probably a group that, that will fit you, um, but it's a great way to increase your social network and, and therefore have more encouragement to be more, more active. And then challenges and adventures. So I'd mentioned that once you add a friend, it's super valuable to then go and start exploring with challenges and adventures. Adventures you can do on your own. Uh, so there's a number of different maps that are already built into the system. It's kind of like a challenge for one, uh, but it's also super fun to have a challenge with a lot of your friends. And so um, highly encouraged. There's a lot of different types of challenges that you can do, um, whether it's a one day challenge or a full week challenge. But and I know that you're also doing challenges with an art band furniture. So these would just kind of be supplemental challenges, you know, with you and, and some of your friends. And then finally, sleep. So sleep is the most popular feature within the Fitbit app. Um, by far, this is the one that uh, over, over time, just having been in this industry, it used to be that people would stop me when they find out that I work at a wearable company and tell me all about their steps and uh, how one day, you know, they got 30,000 steps and, you know, I'm just like trying to eat my lunch. Um, and now it's all about sleep. When they find out I work for Fitbit, everybody wants to, uh, to come over and say, I had no idea I was sleeping so poorly. I wear my Fitbit every day. And, you know, look, look at my REM sleep. You know, look at my light sleep. And, uh, and so it you know, just changed the conversation a little bit. But people get really excited because this was something that you have a general idea of how physically active you are each day. But, you know, you really didn't have a, uh, you know, specific marker to say, Besides, I had good sleep or I had bad sleep last night because we, we don't know because we're asleep. You know, we're tossing and turning, but we don't know really what that means or what that impact is. And so within the sleep tracking, your Fitbit will track your sleep. And then when you wake up, you can go into the Fitbit app. You'll see your sleep, you know, right there as a main tile item. And the things that you can do with sleep, a lot of people have no, no idea just how much you can do. So before I get into the actual tracking, Let's just start with what the sleep tracking actually is doing. So first of all, um, you wear the device and it's using a combination of either just like your physical activity or, or lack thereof to make a determination of, you know, based on the 25 plus million users that wear a Fitbit every single day and the 70 million that, that have worn one at one time or another, um, are you sleeping or are you not? And then depending on how much you're restless throughout the course of the night, you'll get a readout of that. Um, and so at its most basic, that is what sleep tracking is, you know, basically just highlighting when you were awake, when you were restless, and when you were asleep. However, if you have a Fitbit device that also has a heart rate monitor, which is many of them, now you can also get the specific sleep stages. So not just were you awake or were you asleep, but were you dreaming or were you in light sleep or were you in deep sleep? Um, but then even above all of that, you are also able to use the sleep tracking to do bedtime reminders, uh, or you can make your Fitbit a silent alarm clock. Uh, so I use this because I have two little kids. And so when I have to travel for work and I don't want to wake up the whole house and have an angry wife, I will set my Fitbit as my alarm clock and it'll actually vibrate right on my wrist until I, uh, until I get up and I can snooze. Um, or, or I get up for the day. And I use bedtime reminders every single night. So Monday through Friday, I'm able to set a specific time that I wanna start uh, going to bed. 
And I do this because, as I mentioned earlier, with goal setting, I set a sleep goal. And then it recommended a time, based on the time I usually wake up, based on my sleep data, of when I might want to uh, shoot for, for when to go to bed. And so these are, these are great features that are available for every Fitbit that, that does any type of sleep tracking. But the sleep stages even takes it to another level. And so what are sleep stages? So you know, just for, for the uninitiated, uh, stage one is about 4 to 5% of your night. That's muscle activity slows. Your muscles start to twitch. Stage two, which is 45 to 55% of the night, your breathing and your heart rate slow, and it decreases your body temperature, followed by the brain beginning to generate slow delta waves. Stage four, rhythmic breathing and limited muscle activity. Stage five is dreaming, muscles relax, heart rate increases, rapid shallow breathing. And so you can see on the far right what that would look like uh, when you're doing sleep tracking like in a sleep lab, uh, when you're awake, when you have light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. But if you have a Fitbit device that does heart rate, you're gonna get the breakdown of somebody your age what levels they should have of each light, deep, and REM sleep, and then what you had from the previous night. And there's been nights that I've gotten eight hours of sleep, and I just felt like garbage the next day. And when I go into my Fitbit app, you know, I know that deep sleep is when my body is regenerating and, uh, and when my muscles are regenerating. But I kept having my deep sleep interrupted because, again, I, I mentioned I have two little kids. Uh, they don't really care much about my sleep quality. And so they were waking me up. And I just never, I ended up far lower in the deep sleep than anywhere else in my, in my sleep stages. Um, but I would have had no clue about that had I not worn my Fitbit. And so check out sleep. Sleep is available on every single Fitbit device that's out there on the market. Um, sleep stages is available on any Fitbit device that, that has heart rate monitoring. All right, and now we're gonna close it out. We're gonna talk about your Fitbit account and then what you can do as part of the Artvance Furniture Wellness Program. So we're gonna go over uh, just the dashboard overview, some advanced feature settings and community groups. So first of all, if you weren't aware, because many of you probably took your Fitbit device out, connected it to your smartphone, and that's really been the end of your experience. There's actually, a ton that you can do to customize your Fitbit experience. If you go to Fitbit.com, and I think it's slash sign in, something along those lines, but you'll see a, a login button when you go to Fitbit.com. And you use the same email address that you use when you set up your Fitbit and the same password that you have associated with your app. And you're able to log into your Fitbit account. And, uh, and there's more, obviously, that you can do online than in the app, just because you have a, a, a larger canvas to work with. So this is an example, what I'm showing you here, of a standard dashboard, but all of those tiles where you can see the challenge that I'm in or the caloric burn or the water tracking, all those can be customized uh, and even dragged around and repositioned. So you can customize your dashboard, but you know, for example, with exercises, you can click on that and you can get a very, a very detailed look at your heart rate you know, even to the minute of while you were working out, when did it peak? How long was it in that area? And what do those heart rate levels mean? Um, makes it easier to find friends as well. So you can customize your initial dashboard in much of the same ways that you can with your app dashboard, uh, but there's just more that you can do. Uh, next, so, you know, a lot of people will go for runs and they'll say, you know what, I went for this run, and I know it's a five mile run, but for some reason, it's only giving me four miles credit. And it's, you know, it's really frustrating, my Fitbit's broken. And in, in reality, your, your Fitbit hopefully isn't broken, um, but there's settings that you can go and adjust to help make your Fitbit more accurate. Because essentially when you're going for a run and you're not leveraging like a, a Fitbit that has a GPS ability uh, built into it, then on the Fitbit side, really all the information that we have to work with is how many steps did you take and, and you would have indicated how tall you are when you first set up your Fitbit. So we're gonna take a guess towards your gait, but two people of the same height may have a totally different stride length while they're running. And so if you wanna make your Fitbit more accurate and you're noticing that maybe that's a little bit off, you can go into your settings 
and you can actually manually adjust your stride length once you've measured it. And that'll make your Fitbit more accurate for, especially for the distance that you travel. Uh, but there's some other uh, settings that you're able to adjust as well. So what you do is you go to Fitbit.com, you log in. Then on the right-hand panel, you'll see this little gear icon, uh, the kind of standard icon used by most apps to indicate settings. When you go into your settings, that's where you know, there's a, a lot that you can customize. Um, within your program. So I encourage you to explore it, even if you end up not changing anything, just kind of checking it out so you have more of an awareness of what you could uh, change. And it's very intuitive, it'll, it'll make sense. You don't have to be an, an, a Fitbit expert to kind of know what, how these interact. Um, the other thing is that your Fitbit experience, we know it's very personal to you and the data belongs to you. And so at any point, you are able to go into your Fitbit account and export your data. And this counts for your food logging, this counts for any type of activities that you've manually logged or automatically logged, your sleep tracking, your steps, your floors, the list goes on and on and on. And you can select a custom date range, the file format that's basically gonna download as a, a spreadsheet, um, and then you can click download. And I would say that most of the time, if you're using this, I would most of the time I've just heard my clients They'll do this when they have like a doctor's appointment or something like that, and they'll, they want to print out a report for their physician. You know, maybe that's you, you know, if you think that that's information that they would care about. Um, or maybe you just, maybe you're just really into uh, that connected self and you want that data. It's up to you. Whatever you do with it, just, you know, this me just telling you it's available, the data belongs to you, download it at any point. And you can also adjust your privacy settings. So maybe you don't want the world to know that you have a Fitbit. That is completely your right. You can shield all that information from, from your friends. Um, and, uh, or maybe you want everybody to know that you have a Fitbit and you want this to be you know, as open of an experience as possible. When you go into your privacy settings, you have a number of choices of what you want to be invisible, what you want only to be available for your friends, or what you want to be public information. Uh, by default, most of it's going to be um, private information, but you can certainly turn that on if you want to kind of open up your world a little bit. And then community. So let's hypothetically, let's just say that um, you know maybe it's not your colleagues at Art Van Furniture. Maybe it's a, you have family members, and a bunch of them have Fitbit devices, and you guys just you know kind of want to have a little place to call your own. Um, well, community groups might be the best option for you. So again, this is available online only, but when you go and you log into your online account, along the top of the, uh, the, there's a top navigation bar, you'll see dashboard log and then community. When you select community, this is where you can go if you ever have a, a question. Hey, is this a bug or is this happening for anybody else? Or hey, you know, how do you do X, Y, and Z with your Fitbit? There's a couple places where you can go and get those uh, that advice, but there's also a community where you can create a community group. It's completely free. You can make it public or private. That's your call. Uh, or you can find any of the thousands of groups that exist already to join. So this is what it looks like when you're creating a group. This is what it looks like when you're already in that group. So I live in Brunswick, Ohio, just a couple hours away from most of you in Michigan. And there is a Brunswick group that has um, that has many members, and I'm a I'm one of the members. So you, you can see that I get this kind of running tally of who the most physically active uh, are currently in the month. On the right hand panel, I can see all the members. This is a public group, so if you guys want to crash our party, you could find this group and join. There's a whole discussion board at the bottom where people. Uh, tend to use as like, hey, you know, we're starting a running club here in Brunswick. Who wants to join? You know, meet us at the park 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Um, and you can comment off of those threads. You can um, actually follow all topics. You'll get notifications directly within your Fitbit and, and in your email whenever new people post it. And you can also click on view full leaderboard and it's going to show you everybody that's in that group, their steps, their active minutes, and their total distance over a variety of date ranges. So either the current month, the most recent seven days, or the previous month. And so that's kind of another way that you can, you know, I guess in a way have uh, ongoing challenges because you'll have this leaderboard, little, little bit of a sense of competition, but it's a great way to get, you know, maybe 
more people than otherwise you would have in a challenge to all kind of connect and, uh, and meet and support each other within the Fitbit experience. That's totally free. It's already part of the Fitbit experience. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of knowing about it and, and getting there. All right, and so we're, we're gonna wrap before we go to questions, just talking about some of the, um, some, some things that are specific to your program. So if you just got your Fitbit device, or maybe you've had it for a while, but you have not connected it into your health portal, uh, do so, because there are ways that you can get incentives or, or more ways that you can uh, kind of interact with your colleagues and participate in your wellness program um, and it's so much easier if you've connected your Fitbit tracker. And so you can see some of these uh, these um, images that I've included here, but I mean, it's a very simple process. So you'll log into your account. You'll see there's a the track navigation. And when you, uh, when you hover over there, activity will appear. You click on activity, you'll have a prompt to add connected, or to connect devices and apps. There's a big long list, so even if you don't have a Fitbit, um, you know, there's probably an, an app or a tracker that you may already have that you could connect, but certainly if you have your Fitbit, if you're on this webinar, you probably have your Fitbit, you can add your Fitbit, and then, uh, and then you could connect, and you're good, and that means that now, as you're syncing your activity through your Fitbit device, just like you're wearing it every single day, it is now feeding into your wellness program, meaning you can now participate in the program. So that is a, that's a big step. Make sure you're doing that. There's also a ton of great programs that are going on. So, you know, for everyone that's on the line, um, you have an amazing uh, wellness manager who has just tons of really interesting and creative programs that are going on. So make sure that you're participating, you know, as you can see on the, on the bottom here, uh, corehealthylife.com slash artvan, you know, go to that website or call that 1-800 number if you have any questions. But um, there's a lot of different programs. You know, here's just a small sample of some of those programs. You know, there's the Mystery Challenge. There's an entire calendar of events that are coming up. You can find a lot of those in the 2018 program guide. So check that out as well. And again, to enroll, just go to that website that I just mentioned or call that 1-800 number and make sure you're, uh, you're participating because, you know, it's more fun when we're moving together. So, you know, highly in encourage you guys to, uh, to start participating in that program if you haven't already. All right, and so if you have any questions at all with your Fitbit device, um, please either go to this website, the help.fitbit website, or you can email CW support at Fitbit, or there's that 1 800 number for support of any kind. And so at this point, I'm just going to check to see. Looks like we might have a few questions. And so I'm just going to kind of breeze through some of these questions, and um, but certainly. Uh, don't be shy. So unmute yourself. Ask any questions if you have them. This is the time to do it. All right. So I see one question about the Fitbit Blaze. Um, how do you change the time? So the time on your Fitbit is pulled off of the uh, either the, the clock that's on your computer, if you're syncing on your computer, or the clock that's on your smartphone. And so your, your phone, the beautiful thing about whether, well, regardless of what phone you have and it's daylight savings, it automatically changes there. Sometimes on your, your computer, you have to manually adjust it. But what you'll do is make sure that the time is correct on your phone. And then within the Fitbit, you'll go and you'll resync. So there's no way to manually change the, your clock on, on your Fitbit, but it will pull that time directly from your smartphone. And so, so, um, so that's, that's how you're able to do that. If you know, it's not working the way that you should and you're like, I am thinking and it's correct on my phone, try logging out of your Fitbit account on your app, re-logging in and trying again. Sometimes that fixes it. Um, next, somebody said, how do you set up calendar notifications? So what you can do uh, is, and I think this is available on, on quite a few, you know, I think the Alta on up for Fitbit devices. But what you'll do is within the Fitbit app, you'll go to the device settings. So in the top left corner, you'll see a little picture of whatever Fitbit device that you have. You'll click on that device. It'll take you right to that device setting. And then you'll scroll down just a little bit within the app and you'll see notifications. 
uh, and you can click like on or off. You'll click on that, and then it'll give it'll prompt you uh, calendar, text, and phone. Or if you have a Blaze or a Versa or Ionic, it's going to provide you essentially every uh, every single app that you have on your phone that will sometimes provide you with notifications, you can add those on as well. So I have my Slack goes on, and, and most importantly, I have my fantasy football app, as there's a big news that happens throughout the day. I actually get my notifications right on my wrist um, as well through my Fitbit device. So those are, so there's a number of ways that you can do that as well. All right, so another question is, how do I set up my device to automatically log activities, such as going for a walk or riding a stationary bike? And so, and this is uh, available through a number of devices. So what you'll do is, you, again, you'll go into your device, or you'll go into your settings, and within your settings, you'll see um, mobile, or you'll see auto track, and you just wanna make sure that that's on. By default, it's on. Now, I will say that there's a, a level of um, machine learning that happens as well. And what I mean by that is, let's say you go for a walk and you get done with that walk and you're going into your Fitbit account and you don't see any type of adjustment of your activity. And you're thinking, well, that's no fair. The next time, you can actually go into your Fitbit account and manually kind of tag that period of time as your walk either on within the app or online and or if you manually start the exercise so for example you have a, a charge two or something and you've installed walking as one of those pre-designated exercises you can select that and usually if you select it one or two times your fitbit will get smart enough to say you know what there's a couple times they started walking you know i'm just a dumb fitbit i missed it in the past but now I know that when they are doing this type of movement over a consistent period of time, they're going for the walk. So I'm going to remember that for the future. And then it, uh, it'll pick it up the next time. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Or was there anything you were hoping I would cover that I didn't end up addressing? Because we, we have a, a few minutes, and so I just want to make sure that uh, everybody got exactly what they were hoping to get out of today, and, and this was worth your time. Well, I want to thank you, Bryce. Uh, I really got a lot of information out of this. Um, I've had my Fitbit for quite some time, and I didn't know about some of the features that you went over, so I really appreciate and thank you for taking your time and providing us with this useful information. It was my pleasure, yeah, I'm, and I, I was I appreciate everybody who uh, was able to join us for a, a 9 a.m. Uh, conference call. I know it's not everybody's favorite, but hopefully, um, you know, hopefully somebody got, you know, one or two nuggets of information they didn't have before and it was a pleasure you inviting me to do this angelica thank you so to anyone who's on the call if you have any questions after uh, today's call you can send them over to the benefits at artvan.com email address and we can definitely go ahead and get those forward to the price um, before the end of the week um, if anyone has any additional questions All right, well, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. I thank you again for uh, putting on this presentation for us and everyone have a great, um, great day today. All right, bye everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.